Welcome back to the Crypto Bot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and this chart right here shows us billions of dollars that has entered into Bitcoin alongside Michael Saylor, who has just bought another $10 million worth of Bitcoin today for MicroStrategy. So I'll be talking about that in just a moment alongside the short-term Bitcoin charts, short-term Ethereum charts, and the pullback we're now seeing for Ethereum versus Bitcoin and what that means for the altcoin market. So definitely stick around to the end of the video so that you don't miss out on any of this important information. First of all, just giving you a quick update on the weekly Bitcoin chart, looking at the Pi Cycle bottom indicator. These two moving averages are extremely close to crossing over, but they haven't crossed over just yet, which means technically speaking, we could still have a little while longer before we reach any sort of bear market bottom, according to Bitcoin's entire price history. Because obviously, if you're looking at the previous two significant Bitcoin bear markets, which were back in 2014 and 2018, at the end of those bear markets, we saw this bottom signal in this Pi Cycle bottom indicator where basically the red moving average crosses underneath the green moving average and the moments that happened in 2014 the very next week we saw the bear market bottom and then the moment that happened at the end of the 2018 bear market we saw the bottom for that bear market in the exact same week as these lines crossing over and once again they're getting very close but they haven't crossed over just yet and while we're here obviously the weekly bitcoin rsi is still in oversold territories which has only happened just two other times times in Bitcoin's entire price history, which both turned out to be bear market bottoms. And now giving you a quick update on the Bitcoin long positions on the Bitfinex exchange on the weekly timeframe. And nothing much has happened over the past one to two weeks, which is why I haven't really been updating on this chart over the past week or so. But in case you might be new to the channel, these long positions on this exchange are sitting at an all time high, which means right now these long positions on this exchange are holding more Bitcoin than ever before. In fact, right now there's around 107,500 Bitcoin in these Bitcoin long positions, which is a equivalent to well over 2 billion US dollars at today's Bitcoin price. And in case there's any beginners out there, a long position is essentially betting on the Bitcoin price going up. So there's over $2 billion, a record amount of Bitcoin on this exchange, betting on the Bitcoin price going back up. But other than that, there's nothing much else to add here that I haven't already said over the past one to two weeks. So heading over to the 12 hour Bitcoin charts. And right now we're still seeing that short term pullback with the RSI and the MACD also pulling back. But for the most part, on this 12 hour Bitcoin chart, we're still experiencing a lot of choppy sideways price action, just short term bullish and bearish price action, but overall sideways. And obviously, as I've been saying over the past one to two weeks, this time period in the market is extremely similar to what we've seen roughly around one month ago. And considering the fact that we've been seeing a lot of choppy sideways price ranges within this bear market so far, and we're likely going to continue to see more choppy sideways price ranges. So because of that, I'm thinking of making a different type of video tomorrow separate from my regular analysis videos but I'll also post another analysis video tomorrow as well and in that separate video I might share a simple yet profitable trading strategy during choppy sideways price action so let me know in the comment section down below if you're interested in seeing a video like that but anyway zooming into the four hour Bitcoin chart and right now as of recording this video the Bitcoin price has been finding some short-term support around this previous low that we saw a few days ago which is sitting at just underneath twenty thousand dollars per Bitcoin. And obviously, this is something that I've been talking about for the past few days, ever since we really initially broke that level right there for this rising wedge pattern. One of the main levels of support for Bitcoin, at least in the short term, is at around 20,000, or in fact, just below 20,000, more specifically at around 19.7 to 19.8k. But if we fall below this previous low, obviously, that would not be a good sign because it will show that we're actually putting in another lower low on the short term timeframes. And in that case, I would immediately look towards this golden pocket in the Fibonacci retracement tool, which is coming into play at around 19,000. If we break below that previous low at around 19.7k, I would expect a drop down towards around 19,000. And anything below that golden pocket, we do have the technical price target for this rising wedge pattern, which is towards the bottom of the wedge. So basically revisiting that original low down towards around 17,500 to $18,000 per Bitcoin. So to summarize the four hour Bitcoin chart, right now, technically speaking, we're looking slightly 
slightly more bearish than bullish, but we are running into a level of support where we could see a bounce from. But as of right now, we're still yet to see the short-term RSI on this four-hour time frame and the short-term MACD actually reverse back into bullish momentum. We are still seeing short-term bearish momentum on this four-hour time frame. But in the Bitcoin news today, we have Michael Saylor buy another $10 million worth of Bitcoin, more specifically 480 Bitcoin for his company MicroStrategy. And now this purchase relative to some of their other purchases is actually a relatively small purchase for MicroStrategy. But what it shows us is Michael Saylor is still 100% convinced on Bitcoin as a long-term investment, despite being over a billion dollars underwater as of right now. Because right now, MicroStrategy's break-even price is sitting at around 30.6K, which means if the Bitcoin price is below that price just there, obviously they're sitting in an unrealized loss unless they actually sell Bitcoin, then they would realize a loss. And over the past few months, if you've been following crypto and especially crypto Twitter, you probably heard some news stories or some rumors come out about Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy getting liquidated when Bitcoin drops to 21,000. But obviously all of those news articles and rumors were completely false we're still seeing Michael Saylor buy Bitcoin at around 20,000. And who knows, if it keeps dropping, they might end up buying even more. And as Michael Saylor said himself a while ago, actually, it isn't until Bitcoin hits around $3,000 per coin that he actually has to post more collateral for the debt that he has against his Bitcoin. So unless you think the Bitcoin price is going to dump below $3,000 per coin anytime soon, I don't see Michael Saylor getting liquidated anytime soon. But on a real note, can Michael Saylor hold off the Bitcoin buys for a moment? Because usually when he buys, the Bitcoin price basically dumps. But anyway, getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this right here is the weekly Ethereum chart, and we're still finding support around this 38.2% Fibonacci level when you draw the Fibonacci retracement tool from the March 2020 bottom to the all-time high, and this Fibonacci level is coming into play at around 1050, 1050. And zooming into the 12-hour Ethereum to US dollar chart, we're still seeing a very similar thing to what we saw yesterday, and also what we're seeing on the Bitcoin 12-hour charts, which is basically a lot of choppy sideways price action over all on the 12 hour time frame, but in the shorter term, we're seeing a bit more of a pullback to balance out that bullish price action that we previously experienced over the past one week or so. And right now, if you're simply just going off the price action, the RSI and the MACD on the 12 hour time frame, we do look like we're in a very similar situation in the short term to what we were in back here towards the end of May. After we experienced a lot of choppy sideways price action, we experienced a bit more of a pullback where the 12 hour Ethereum RSI also pulled back from its uptrend, and we did actually see a more bearish cross in the 12 hour Ethereum MACD. And right now we're experiencing that short term pullback in the 12 hour RSI, but we have not seen that bearish cross for the 12 hour Ethereum MACD, at least just yet. Now, zooming in even further into the four hour Ethereum chart, what we're seeing at the moment as I'm recording this video is Ethereum is finding some support around this 38.2% Fibonacci level when drawn from the low that we saw a little over a week ago to this recent high. And this 38.2% Fibonacci level is coming to play at around 1%. 1.1k. But if Ethereum confirms a break below 1.1k, I'll be looking towards this previous low, which is sitting at around 1050, which is once again where that 38.2% Fibonacci level is coming to play on the weekly time frame. But heading back to the four hour time frame and anything below that previous low at around 1050, next I'll be looking towards 1000 as a significant level of support according to this golden pocket and also one of the price targets for this rising wedge pattern as I talked about more yesterday. But but generally speaking, the technical price target for a rising wedge pattern is more often than not at the bottom of the wedge, which is coming into play at around $900 per Ethereum. But keep in mind, between that price target and right now, we still have all of those other levels of support where we could see a bounce from those levels. And I talked more about how I incorporate that in a short-term strategy in yesterday's video. So once again, if you missed my last video, definitely check it out because that will be important to pay attention to. And something else that is important to pay attention to for not just Ethereum, holders, but all altcoin holders out there. And that is the Ethereum versus Bitcoin chart on this four hour time frame, which is experiencing that short term pullback today, which is exactly what I talked about yesterday. Because not only were we showing bearish signs in both the RSI and the MACD on the four hour time frame for Ethereum versus Bitcoin before this pullback started, we were also seeing very clear Wyckoff distribution as I also covered in my last video. And this right here, the Wyckoff distribution schematic number two is obviously a bearish pattern. You can see that the price moves up and then we basically have that distribution and then the price reverses into a downtrend. And right now we're basically in phase E of this Wyckoff distribution, 
where we're seeing that downtrend kick in, at least in the short term, because remember, we're only on the four hour time frame. But if you zoom out to the weekly time frame for Ethereum versus Bitcoin, that short term pullback is resulting in this weekly candle being a red candle. And this is happening right after we saw two green weekly candles for Ethereum versus Bitcoin, which also happened at the same time as the weekly Ethereum versus Bitcoin RSI brushed against oversold territories. And if you're comparing all of this to what we saw back in the 2018 bear market, we could potentially be in a situation kind of like right here. And this area of circle is in September 2018. So it was in the second half of the bear market. But basically what we saw leading up to that stage, entering into 2018, we saw a significant drop off to the downside, followed by a fairly significant move back to the upside, but not higher than that previous high. And then we saw an even bigger move to the downside where the RSI got down towards oversold territories. And then we saw a two week bounce, two weeks of green. And then what came next after those two green weeks was a further pullback to the downside for Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And then we actually experienced a decent bounce back to the upside before another significant leg to the downside, which actually came after the bear market ended. So if you're comparing that to what we're seeing at the moment, we saw that significant move to the downside, followed by a fairly significant bounce back to the upside, but not higher than that previous high. And then we saw an even bigger move to the downside. So this right here is somewhat similar to what we saw in early 2018. And then we saw the RSI reach down towards oversold territories, just like here. And then we saw two weeks of green, and now we're entering into another red week, very similar to what we saw back here. Now, obviously, just because we saw something play out in the past, it does not guarantee we're going to see the exact same thing in the future. But oftentimes, we do see very similar things in markets due to human psychology trading the same things. So even though we might not end up seeing the exact same thing, we might see something very similar. And so overall, I am simply more bearish than bullish for Ethereum versus Bitcoin on this weekly chart, as well as the current four hour time frame. which means if Ethereum is pulling back against Bitcoin, that essentially means Ethereum is underperforming against Bitcoin. And usually that is a pretty good indication for the overall altcoin market, especially on the larger timeframes. Altcoins did extremely well during this time period in the market during the more bullish times when Ethereum was outperforming Bitcoin. But in the more bearish times, altcoins and Ethereum usually underperform against Bitcoin, generally speaking. But there are still ways to make a lot of money with Bitcoin, Ethereum and altcoins, even if the price is going down. And if you want to know exactly how to do that, check out this video popping up right here on your screen to find out how you can keep making money in crypto, even if prices are going down. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.